Are you trying to figure out how to reduce technical debt, but you just don't know how or where to start? Hi there, my name is Josh, and I'm one of the founders here at Product HQ. And I've been managing software projects for over 10 years. And I'm going to use some of the tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help you reduce technical debt. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and that way you can get notified whenever we come out with new videos on how to build great products. Now let's go ahead and dive right in. So before I tell you how to reduce technical debt, let me explain the different categories as well as how it can be deliberate or inadvertent. Deliberate technical debt, which is sometimes called active debt, happens when companies consciously delay solving an issue in order to achieve a goal or a milestone. While inadvertent or passive debt happens accidentally or because of carelessness, like making coding errors or choosing the wrong platforms. Whether it's deliberate or accidental, there are 13 different ways in which it can occur, as you can see in the diagram on your screen. The first is architecture debt, which deals with issues in the project's architecture that ultimately affects performance and robustness and is rarely ever solved with simple interventions. Build debt refers to problems that make the build more difficult because they take more time and resources than necessary. And code debt deals with problems in the source code that negatively affect the code's legibility, making it more difficult to maintain. And the fourth is defect debt, which deals with the known defects usually identified during testing that the change control board knows should be fixed, but hasn't done so yet due to other priorities or limited resources. And design debt is a debt that can be discovered by identifying the use of practices that violate the principles of good object-oriented design. And documentation debt refers to problems like missing, inadequate, or incomplete documentation of any kind. And next we have infrastructure debt which is caused by the infrastructure issues that can delay or hinder development, like delaying an upgrade or an infrastructure fix. And people debt, as the name suggests, refers to the issues with people. For example, if not enough team members are trained, delays in software development are bound to happen. And process debt is all about inefficient processes, like a process no longer being appropriate for what it was designed for. And the 10th is requirement debt, which comes about because of trade-offs made with respect to the requirements the development team needs to implement. For example, requirements that are only partially implemented. And service debt refers to the debt incurred by the need for web service substitution, which can be driven by both business and technical objectives. And then we have test automation debt, which is the work needed to automate tests of previously developed functionality to support continuous integration and faster development cycles. And last year, we have test debt, which comes about when there are issues that affect the quality of testing activities, like when planned tests are not run. And it's important to understand that not all technical debt is the same, which is why identifying it is the first key in choosing a plan of attack, which now leads us to how to reduce it. And the two main aspects that any company can focus on is, one, to minimize the creation of new debt, and two, to pay back what's already existing as regularly and efficiently as possible. And we're going to dive into five ways you can do both. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look. So tip one is that you should make it a point to deal with the cruft. And the cruft is a fancy way of saying badly designed or needlessly complicated code or software. And this is what companies need to track and remove from ideally every release cycle. And to do that, start by taking inventory of your tech debt. So keep a list of what exists in your company, then categorize it. Group the different debts into work well units based on the cost of fixing it, their complexity, and their potential impact on the company. The appraisal comes next. Make a note of the consequences of ignoring each of those units so you can prioritize what needs to be done and when. You also need to make sure that this list is accessible to all the relevant parties in your company, which should include but isn't limited to stakeholders, sales and marketing. And the last step in dealing with craft is to get rid of it early and regularly. Make this process, which should be ideally done by a KPI team member, a continuous part of every release cycle. The second way to reduce tech debt is by not hiring low quality developers and engineers. So two mindsets should be embraced when hiring developers and engineers, and that's value over price and quality over quantity. That's because low quality or cheap developers and engineers not only create more tech debt, but they can create it even when trying to solve what already exists. And in the end, the money saved by hiring cheap labor won't make up for new tech debt that they've created. And smaller teams with talented members will always operate better than bigger, less skilled ones. And tip three is to write high quality code. Writing high quality code goes hand in hand with hiring high quality developers and engineers. And you can ensure that your team does that by measuring the metrics of class couple, 
Arity, the depth of inheritance, lines of code, and more. It's more to reward high quality code and not high quantity code. A coding style guide detailing the best practices can make it easier for your team to not only write cleaner syntax, but also spend more time reviewing the code. And tip four is to turn to automated testing. Manual testing as a means of controlling tech debt should never be a long-term option. Automated testing is the way to go, despite it taking some time and effort to set up and maintain. In the long run, automated testing will help uncover Cruft more consistently and precisely. And the fifth and final tip to help you reduce technical debt is to keep a record of all changes. Now, this may seem like an obvious step, but you'll often find companies slacking off where keeping records are concerned. The development team should be responsible for documenting every change in a repository so that problems can be easily traced to their source and the debt can be documented. Keeping records is also helpful when dealing with complex projects that require delicate changes, like migrating to the cloud. Remember that some tech debt is inevitable, but regular reviews and maintenance make it manageable. And there we have it. We just went over the different types of technical debt and how to reduce technical debt. If you feel like you have a better idea of how to do just that, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel so you can learn how to build great products with all the future videos and all the current videos that we have. And I'll go ahead and see you on those. Cheers.